This video is part of my brand new course, Mastering Sif UI MapKit, The Complete Guide. I just released this course a couple of days ago, and it is going to teach you everything you want to know about MapKit development with Swift UI. You can take a look at the contents a little bit closer after learning about getting started with Swift UI Maps. You will take a deep dive into implementing a near me application where you can find out all the closest points of interest like coffee shop, burger shop, taco shops near your current location. And we're also going to learn about how to consume an API, a JSON API for a restroom finder. And we're gonna find all the restrooms close to you. So two completely uh, new apps, you will be learning how to build those. So go ahead, check out the YouTube description and you'll find a discounted links for the course. Go get it. Now let's get back to the video. All right, everyone, let's go ahead and get started. We will create our iOS Swift UI application in Xcode. Let's select app, next. The name of the app can be anything. I'm just gonna call it Hello Maps. And on the desktop is perfectly fine. When you create a new Swift UI project and you open the project, this is kind of like the default code that you get. And you can look at the preview of this code on the right hand side in the Xcode previews. So what we want to do is we don't really care that much about this V stack and stuff. We just want to display a map. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to import MapKit. And this is mandatory. You have to import MapKit because the Swift UI map view lives or it is contained in the MapKit framework. Next, we can simply use the map control, map, and that's it. And you'll see that how easy it is to simply display a map. In a few lines of code, it's basically one line of code, we were able to display the map. And the great thing about this map is that it is completely interactive. I can go ahead and pan different locations of the map. I can also press the option key and kind of like zoom in or zoom out of the map. Let's go ahead and uh, try to get closer to Houston, where I live. So over here, you can see the details of the map. Uh, we'll also learn about that, how you can go and check out the satellite view versus a standard view versus a hybrid view, all of those cool things. There's a lot of cool things in the map. So you can see now that one line of code, the using the map control, you, the map view, and we're able to display in map in Swift UI. Now, the next thing we need to learn is about annotations and markers. So let's go ahead, next lecture. So let's start with putting marker on our map. Now, marker can easily be added on the map by using map and then providing the markers. Now, if you look at the implementation of the map viewer here, you can see that the content is the important part, which is map content. And this is where you can provide annotations or markers. So let's go ahead and do that. In order to create a marker, we do need the coordinate, in, which means that where the marker will be displayed. And right now we don't really have the coordinate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and simply create a marker and we'll call it coffee. And the coordinate is something that we need to create. So how do we create that coordinate? Well, there are multiple ways. What I'm going to do is I'm simply going to go ahead and create an extension, which you can create in a completely separate file. And in that extension, I'm going to create a static property, which will be a coffee. This will be CL location coordinate 2D. This means that this particular property, which is an extension property of the CL location coordinate 2D, is going to give you the coordinate. It's going to return you some hard-coded coordinates. Now I can go ahead and add some coordinates over here. Now the great thing about these coordinates, if you want to find the coordinates, is that there are many different ways of finding the coordinates. 
there are several different websites that are available that you can go to and you can enter the address and it will give you the coordinates like latitude and longitude. But you don't really have to do that because in Google Maps, you can actually easily find the coordinates. So let's go ahead and see that if I want to find a coordinate, how I can do that. So if I'm going to simply search for a bakery, and you can see that there are many different bakeries over here. So let's go ahead and select this one. Actually, I haven't been to this bakery. It looks pretty good. So let's click on that. And right over here, you can see that where the bakery is. I can right click on it and I can find the coordinates. So you can see that by using Google Maps, you can easily find the latitude and longitude. Now, I'm not going to select this particular latitude and longitude. You can. Uh, I already have the coordinates of a different place, so I just entered those hard-coded coordinates. Next, we can simply go ahead and since this particular thing is a CL location coordinate 2D, I can simply say dot and I should be able to find uh, the coordinates of a particular thing. So I can say a coffee over here. And this coffee refers to the coffee that you just created. And there you go. We're able to display a coffee marker on our screen, on our maps. I can also go ahead and try to view it as a 3D or try to zoom out. It looks beautiful and the marker is still there. Pretty cool, right? But what about if I wanted to add another marker? Well, it's not a big deal because we can always go in and add more properties to our CL location coordinate 2D. And this time I'm pointing to a restaurant. Again, we're using hard coded locations. If I want to create another marker, well, I can simply go ahead and create marker, passing in some sort of a name of the restaurant. I mean, I'll just call it restaurant for now on. And the coordinates, which can be simply restaurant. And now you can see that the map kind of automatically zooms out so that we can see both the markers in action. We can see the coffee marker and we can see the restaurant marker. So this is pretty good. We're able to show markers based on the hard-coded data that we have. Great. What about if we wanted to change these markers so that they don't really appear as a red bubble, but we should have a flexibility of displaying our markers any way we like. And this is where annotations come into play. So in the next lecture, we'll be learning about how we can use annotations to completely customize the look and feel for our point of interest. In the last lecture, we work with markers and we were able to display two different markers on our map, one for the coffee and one for the restaurant. And they both look okay, but I think we can improve that. Wouldn't it be nice if a coffee marker actually looks like a coffee and a restaurant marker will represent a restaurant? So instead of using the markers, what we can do is we can use annotation. Annotation allows you to change the view, meaning the interface of something that is being placed onto the map. Let's go ahead and give the title to this annotation. I'm just gonna call it coffee. The coordinate we can easily get from the hard-coded coordinate, so we'll just pass in coffee. And for the content, this is where you can customize it. If I simply pass in text and call it coffee, then you'll see that it simply displays uh, coffee. So whatever you pass as a content will actually be reflected as an annotation or as a view of the annotation. We can make definitely make it much better. So for this, I'm just going to go ahead and add an image. And we can use a system name and provide some sort of a name for that image, like cup dot, well, I'll just copy it and you'll see because it's kind of like a long thing to write. There we go. Now, if you're wondering, well, hold on a second, where did you get this name? How did you know that system name you need to pass in cup.and.saucer.fill? 
This is just a system name for the icons that are provided by Apple. Now, the way that I got this name is through an application called San Francisco or SF Symbols. This application is free to download, so you can always download it. Let's see if I can actually show you it running. It's right over here. You can see that right now over here, I can search on the top right hand corner and I'm searching for food. If I search for drink, uh, it shows up some icons related to the drink. I can always go to the icon and right click and copy the name. And that's how I got the name. Okay. As soon as we create the annotation and pass in the image, we can see that our item or the pin that we have on the map looks much better. Our annotation has now some sort of a personality. It looks much nicer. We can also add an annotation for the restaurant in a similar way. We can say annotation, pass in some sort of a title. In this case, we will pass in the restaurant as a title. The coordinate can simply be restaurant. And the content again, we can use an image, but this time we're going to use a special image, which will be fork.knife.circle. And you can see right over here, it displays it. You have complete control of the content or of the view that you're displaying. So you can go ahead and change it. I can go and add some padding to it. I can go ahead and add some foreground color to it. Let's say white and also some sort of a background color if I want to. I can also go ahead and change the radius, let's say 4.0. So now you can see that I've changed the coffee annotation and it looks much better, much clearer. You can do the same thing for the restaurant. Use your creativity to make sure that the restaurant also looks really nice. So there you have it. We have now created two annotation, one to represent the coffee and the other one to represent a restaurant. And with annotation, you have complete control and you can go ahead and style it whichever way you want to. Now, right now, you can see the map in its standard style, but you can change the style of the map by using the map style modifier. This gives you the ability to change it from standard to hybrid. And there we go. And you can also change it to imagery, which basically is satellite. Great. So although it works, but it would be much nicer if the user does have an access or does have some sort of a UI to change these styles. So how can we do that? In order to do that, we have to create some sort of a segmented control on the top with all of these different styles, the standard style, the hybrid style, and the imagery or the satellite style. For that, we will create our map options. We'll create it as an enum and we'll call it map options. This will simply display different type of options. We can have a string as their raw value, identifiable because we do want to use it in our interface, in our UI, and case iterable, meaning whatever the cases we have, we should be able to iterate through all of these cases using a for loop. I'll add different styles that we are giving to the user, which are standard, hybrid, and imagery. Since the map option is conforming to identifiable, it also needs to make sure that we define some sort of a ID value. And we can simply return the raw value, which is self.raw value. The next step for us would be to display a segmented control. We also want the segmented control to be displayed kind of like on the top of the screen rather than the bottom or the middle. One of the ways is to simply wrap all of our controls with a Z stack. 
when we wrap everything with the Z stack, the first control that comes is on the bottom layer, and the next control that you're going to be adding will come on top of it. This means that if we want, we can go ahead and create our picker control. So I'll use a picker view, and we can go ahead and talk about the title that we're going to send, which will be map styles. And whenever you select something from the picker, it should go into a binding, which is called selected map option. We don't really have that right now, but we will create that. And for the content, which returns you a view, we can run a for each view on the map options dot all cases. The all cases property is now available to us since our map options conform to case iterable. We'll go over each map options. So we'll start with map option. And we will simply display a text value, map option dot raw value, which is a string and capitalize because we do want to display in correct format on the UI with the first letter being capitalized dot tag, this means that this value will actually be selected and passing in the map options. For the selected map option, we are simply going to create a state value or a state property. Now, if you run this right now, you can definitely see some sort of a picker control being displayed, but this is displayed not as a segmented control. So we can change the style over here to call it a segmented control. And now it displays like a segmented control, which is great. We also want the segmented control or the picker on the top. So we can perform the alignment and we can say top. Great. If you're interested in making sure that your picker control is not see-through, is opaque, then we can go ahead and give this some sort of a background. So I'm just gonna go ahead and give it a background of white. When I give the background of white, you can see the top portion, this part also becomes white, but we actually want the map to go through underneath the segmented control. And this can be done by simply adding the padding. Now you can see that our segmented control looks pretty nice. And by default, it is selecting standard because that's the value that we have selected when we initialize selected map option. The next point or the next step is whenever we select something, a different map option, we want to update the map. For this, inside the map options, we can create a map style property that is going to return you the map style. This is a style that is needed by the map style modifier. And now we can perform a simple switch on itself, which means on map options, and return you a particular style like standard, hybrid, or imagery. Later on, on the map itself, we can use the map style and pass in the selected map option dot map style. This means that whenever the user select a particular map option, the style is updated and applied using the map style modifier. So there you have it. By writing a couple of lines of code, we were able to display multiple styles for our map in Safuai.